tonight. How many is glad you're a Christian? Praise God. I was glad when they said unto me, let us enter into the house of the Lord. I'm glad I'm a Christian. Amen to God. It's just good to be back here again. And amen. Since the last time I've been here and seen you folks, amen, we had a terrible fall. It was somewhere around, i say about 23 feet fall. And and we hit head first when we hit the ground. And and, and it, I come so close to leaving here, the doctor didn't even know whether I was going to make it or not the first night in the in the trauma center couldn't even give my wife no hope and all and I, now I didn't know nothing about it I was I was not totally out and I uh, didn't come back after the fall I didn't come back to the next day sometimes it didn't know it was even in the world and um, but I thank God that God spared me. Yeah, right. Hallelujah. Brother Dave, death was there, really close. Yeah, yeah. But I thank God that mercy was there even closer. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. Mercy was there. Amen to God. And oh, you can't have you can't have him yet. Praise the Lord. And I've, I've been doing some thinking lately. I, I thank the Lord, you must be wanting me to preach a while longer. Yeah. <laughs> Amen to God. Hallelujah. We've been, we've been preaching uh, almost 42 years, right around 42. And, and uh, maybe God wants me to preach 50 or more. <laughs> Amen. It, 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 Amen. But God blesses me to live a hundred. If I'm still able to talk, I'll preach it, brother. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. You know, I heard uh, uh, preachers talking about, um, you know, retiring. Amen. If you're called by the Holy Ghost to preach the Word of God, there's no such thing as retiring from the ministry. Amen, Amen to God until your toes are sticking straight up. Amen. Now, when when Jesus calls you home, then you can retire from your labor. Yeah. Other than that, this is a lifetime thing. Yeah. Praise God. And I just thank the Lord, amen, tonight that God it has been so good. Amen. Uh, it's uh, the 18th of this month. It made a year since, since the fall one. And uh, the Lord brought me a very long ways. I'm not completely yet, but... Amen. We still have pain and things, but the, uh, but God has brought me a very long ways. And, and they told my wife that uh, before I left that trauma center that he'll probably have to take pain pills the rest of his life. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I don't take anything for pain tonight. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I come off them things as about as quick as I could. Yeah, got off and I'm thinking as quick as I could. Praise the Lord. Well, I've been off them things a long time now. Amen. Hey, yeah, we heard a little bit, but you know what? I can bear it. Amen. <laughs> I can bear it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. They got as long as I can bear it. I don't need the stuff. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. And, uh, uh, I just thank God I don't have to fool them things the rest of my life. But, but one thing I do want to do the rest of my life. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb the Most High. Oh, praise God. Ain't God good? If you got your Bibles, you'd really like to read with me. Turn to the... Uh, the second chapter of Acts the Apostles and this is what I felt like uh, preaching and amen and uh, we could preach a number of different things but this is what I felt like the Lord will have me to speak on amen tonight and amen and um, just pray for me you know since the fall, and I have been having problems with my memory, Brother Dave. 
But when it comes down to preaching, I don't preach just by memory. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. And I thank God tonight that He is such a good God. He's such a great God. Amen. The, the second chapter of Acts of Apostles, and beginning of verse 8 36. Therefore let all the house of Israel know surely that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Yeah. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? You may be seated. We're living in a world that not they, they don't know what to do. When it comes to salvation, it will amaze you, it will surprise you how many people that's right here in America, in this great country, they don't really know what to do when it comes to salvation. Amen. They think they, they know, but... They really don't know. Hey, man, to God, because when, when you step outside the Word of God or when you have never stepped in the Word, Come on. and you live your life away from the Word and from the teachings of God's Word, then you really don't know what you're doing. Come on. If you're not walking by the Word of God, if you don't have your life, your very life, hey, man, walking in this Word, then you really don't know what you're doing. Right. Hey, man, be hey. God. But, but listen to what it said. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. Now a prick is a, a sharp puncture. Yes, it is. Hey, man, so when they were pricked in their heart. Hey, man, when they heard this, when they heard the Word of God that was uh, being preached that day, been spoke that day, hey, man, it pricked their heart. It punctured into their heart. Amen. How many knows that's what must take place in a person's life? Amen. The Word of God is God the puncture your heart. Amen. Yeah, right. Amen. Hey, the God, it can't, it can't get in there unless it punctures the heart. Amen. It'll break that heart. Hey, man, it'll puncture that heart and break it and, and then it'll get right down on the inside of that heart and then it'll fix that heart. Hallelujah. And no wonder that one writer said that my heart is fixed, oh God. Yeah. Oh, my heart is fixed. How many has got your heart fixed tonight? Yeah. Amen. Be God, when the Word of God punctures the heart, when it gets down in there, it'll begin to fix things then. Hallelujah. Oh, when it punctures the heart, a broken heart and a contrite spirit in God, is of a great price. Amen. God don't despise so saying amen a broken heart. That's how you come to Jesus. You come to Him with a broken heart. You don't come to Jesus popping your bubble gum and, and getting up and walking out of the church popping your bubble gum. Amen. Brother, when you come to Jesus, if you come the Bible way, hey amen, if you come the way God calls you to come, you'll come with tears. You'll come with a broken heart. Hey amen, you'll come, hey amen, with repentance in your heart. Hey amen, when you get down and begin to pray, you don't care who hears you. Hey amen, it's Jesus, forgive my Jesus, come in to my life, my heart. Amen to God. Amen. You come up out of there. 
Hallelujah. Brother, they we preach revival. And I don't know how many cross the altars repenting. And some of them young girls come up there blue stuff on their eyelids and different colors of makeup on and Hey man, you just see it washing down in puddles of streams down down their face. Hey man, when they were repenting. Hey man, when God was getting a hold of their heart and just solving them. Hey man, they didn't care what they looked like or who who seen it. Hey man, they was getting something from God. Hey man, God has broken their heart. God was getting into their life. Hey man, God was God was fixing the heart that night. Praise God. Oh, praise His holy name. Oh, they were pricked in their heart. But they didn't, know, they didn't want to know what to do until their heart was pricked. Amen. Until something got a hold of the heart. Amen. Then they wanted to know what shall we do. Amen. Then they got concerned about their situation. Hey man, it's got to get into their heart in order for it to change lives. It's got to get a hold of their heart. Hey man, if they're going to come out from sin, if they're going to come out from a corrupt life, it's got to get a hold of their heart. Hey man, oh, before their desires change, before their life will change, it's got to get a hold of their heart. Hey man, it'll make a change in anybody. You can tell when a person's really when it's really gotten a hold of your heart, brother. They don't they don't talk like they used to talk before. No more. They they don't go to places they used to go anymore. They don't do the awful things they used to do before. Hey, Amen. They don't even want to do them. They don't even want to know about those things no more. Hey, Amen. Because God got a hold of their heart. Hey, Amen. When God gets a hold of the heart, He'll change the rest of that person. Amen. Amen. And brethren, what shall we do? We're living in a world like this tonight. We're living in a world that needs to know what to do when it comes down to Jesus. Amen. Because a lot of this world has been taught, amen, that the Holy Ghost is not even a part of the church system today. Amen. There's six foot icicles in the pulpits telling people that speaking in tongues, they don't need to speak in tongues anymore. Amen. But let me tell you something today. Amen. The God when the Word of God gets a hold of the heart. Amen. It fixes that heart. Amen. Then you become a candidate for the Holy Ghost and the power of God to get a hold of your life. Amen. Hallelujah. What shall we do? I believe there's folks here tonight that can tell people what they shall do, what they really ought to do. Know how to get saved. Know how to get saved and know how to stay saved. Amen. Oh. I say, preacher, I didn't know you won't get saved until you go on. Well, you got to live in a, in a saved condition, brother. You got to live your life in a saved condition while you're living if you're going to be saved at the end. Amen. Praise God. Well, the Word of God is the power of God unto salvation. Amen. And, and so, uh, they said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, it wouldn't last just one. It was just all of them. What shall we do? There are so many out there tonight. They're so worried about the, hey Amen. What, what, what's going to hit the offering plate? There's, they're, they're just too much worried about the number, the numbers they're going to have back there in the pews. 
they're so concerned about things like this that they're, they're bound. Amen. And they, they can't preach the word of God like a person really ought to. Amen. Now let me tell you something. God's going to bring it into judgment someday. He'll come out in the great judgment of God. Amen. And there's going to be a lot of people standing on the, on the wrong side because they let things like that. Amen. And get a hold of them and, and keep them away from God's word. Oh, what shall we do? Now Peter's getting ready to tell them what they should do here. Yeah. Then Peter is saying unto them, Repent. That's the first thing. They know what you heard. Amen. They heard already. They, they down are preaching to them. Heard the word of God preached that day. So Peter says, Repent. Come on. He didn't hesitate in telling them either. Come on. Glory to God. Repent and be baptized. You mean get all wet, preacher? Oh yeah, get all wet. Come on, come on. Every hair on your head. Hey, man, every stitch of your body. Get it under that water. Amen. A little old sprinkle just won't do it, brother. Come on. Uh uh. Just a little dab won't do me this thing tonight. Praise God. They had an old commercial. That little dab will do you. No, little dab don't do you tonight. Hey, man, it's going to take the whole body. It's going to take the whole soul, the whole spirit. Hey, man, the whole body filled with the power of God. The whole heart fixed. Hey, man, the Word of God filled that, that, that temple, that Amen. body. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, preacher, what happened to Matthew 28? The same apostles over in Matthew 28, Jesus is talking to the same ones that was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. The very same men. The only thing is that the, those very same men know what he's talking about. And, and, and uh, Matthew 28 chapter when he said, Go in all the world teaching all nations and baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost in the name of the Father. Yeah. Now, Brother Dave, you're a father. Yeah. yeah. But I don't call you father. You got a name, brother. In the name of the Father, that you're you're a son. Yeah. But no, nobody goes around just calling you son unless they try to joke with you or something. Yeah. You're a son, but if, if, but if I want to get your attention, I, I don't uh, I don't uh, let a hooray, son. No. I call his name. He's got a name, you see. Amen. That gets his attention right now. Amen to God. You can write a check, brother. You put father on it, take it to the bank and see what the see what those guys will tell you. You write son on it and take it to the bank and see if you can get any cash from that bank. It was him now. Son. Oh, oh father, oh, what's going on here? What are you doing here? Hey, man, what's the name? The name, the name. The name is Jesus. The name is Jesus. Hallelujah. That's the only name. Give a little heaven. Love must be saved. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, I'm beginning to feel this thing. We tried to start preaching several months ago, and my body couldn't take it, Brother Dave. And I had to take even a, a longer break. I believe we're going to make it this time. Hallelujah. The name is Jesus. 
when he said, May a thousand down with the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost, talking to the very same men here in the second chapter of Acts of the Apostles, the same men he spoke this to, you find the same men down there about thousand down. in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Woo! What they doing, preacher? When they were baptized them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. What were they doing, preacher? They were baptized them in the name of Jesus Christ. They're against this. Jesus. They're against it. You can open your Bibles up and show it right, show it right there in the Bible to them. We don't want that. No. Don't want that. But this is the Word of God. Now let me back up just a little bit, please. What well, I'm feeling this Holy Ghost tonight. Then Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You don't know, really learn one of these steps out if you really want to get somewhere with God. Come on, come on. When the Word of God pricks that heart, it becomes sad because because that you 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 won't without God and you, you live against the, at the Word and, and the things of God your heart has been sad and it's broken yeah. and then it comes repenting I'm sorry oh, I'm sorry God I'm sorry oh with tears just a stream and I'm sorry Gila. forgive me forgive me you know, I didn't know about two or three words to pray tonight when I come repenting of my sins. And you know what it was? Hey, man, it was Jesus. Forgive me. Hey, man, but all I know the same. But you know what? It was enough. It was enough. Praise God. Jesus, forgive me. Hallelujah. How many remembers the time when Jesus came into your love? He got into your heart. He changed everything about you, praise God. I'm going to say, preacher, you mean he changes everything about you? Oh, yeah. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, old things are passed away. Behold, all things, amen, are new. All the old things are passed away. All them old things, hey man, that drove your temper to, hey man, from a scale of one to ten, a plum up to a ten just in a minute's time. It's gone. It's behind you. You might say, preacher, you tell me you don't get angry. Oh yeah, I get angry. Hey man, but I control that anger. I control it by the power of God. I control the word of God in my life. It don't get the best to me no more. Hey man, because of God's power in me. Come on, man. That's right. Come on. Oh, Lord. Temperance. That's what people need. Oh, when they heard this. Now, when they heard this. They were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Do you know what to do tonight? Do 
Do you, do you know how important it is to do what the Word of God teaches? Do you, do you really understand salvation? Do you, do you understand it with your heart? Amen. How it is important. Amen. To get salvation the way the Bible teaches you. Amen. To get God in your life exactly the way the Bible teaches. Amen. And when you do, brother, it'll change you entirely. It'll change the way you think. It'll change the way you look. It'll change you. Amen. Even the dogs are no different in you. I don't know about that preacher. Well, you don't, you're not kicking them around no more. <laughs> Old pooch. See you come around the corner. He gone right fast, you see, before. But after a period of time, he ain't getting kicked around no more. He decides to stay around a little while now. Why? He's not getting kicked around no more. Something got a hold of your life. Amen. And well, even in your home, your children has noticed a difference. Amen. You, everybody around you, your neighbors has noticed a difference. And there was a difference in your life. And there was a difference in, in you. Hey man, you don't speak by the things you used to speak before by, by that old Adam the nature way no more. You, you, you speak now as an oracle of God. You speak now. Hey man, the word of God. You speak now that which gives life. You speak now. Hey man, the change that came in you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I remember when Jesus came into my life. I prayed. And I repented. I don't know, I must have prayed about an hour that night. Went home. Things just said on me. Well, you're not saved yet. I didn't understand what was going on. And I went to my sister. She was going to, been going to church for a long time. I told her, well, I, I don't know I'm saved yet. And I prayed a long prayer. Jesus would give me and prayed and cried. And, and she looked at me just as simple. She said, would you go back to the altar then? <laughs> and you know what? That's exactly what I did. I took it straight to heart. When I get back to the church, to the house of God, I'm going right, to go right back to the altar again. And I went right back to that altar about about three about three or four words over again. Jesus, Amen. Save me, forgive me. Amen. Thank God, but you know why I was I praying that prayer that night? Something shot through this old boy. Amen. Maybe before I even thought, I just said, "Come up out of there!" Started jumping straight up and down. Amen. Thank God, because I felt. Something and get a hold of me that night like I have never felt in my whole entire life. What was it, preacher? Jesus has forgiven this old boy. He made a change in this old boy. Hey, man, to God. Oh, oh, praise the Lord. That was just reflex. It seemed like just jump out of our store, jump up the way we thought what I was doing. I read, I went home and I told the folks. I don't know how many I told. Over the next so many days, I just didn't know that it was so good. <laughs> oh, I just didn't know that it was so good. Let me tell you something tonight. Bible tells us to let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Now that's not telling you that now don't nobody else tell me nothing about what it's about, brother, because it's my own mind. Yeah, it's saying fully persuaded in your own mind that you're in the right thing. Amen. That you are in Amen. that you are in the scriptures. Let me tell you something. I started seeking God for the Holy Ghost immediately, 
right after, right after I felt like Jesus, Amen, washed away my sins. I started seeking for the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Every night I was around that altar. Nobody didn't have to pump and prime and, and, and beg and plead for me to get to that altar. Brother, I couldn't I couldn't hardly wait to, to get to church to, to pray around that altar. I looked forward. I looked so so forward to, to get to the house of God so I can pray around that altar. Amen. Come on. Amen. When that altar call was given, brother, I hit that altar. And I don't know if I ever prayed anything less than an hour or longer. <laughs> And I prayed and cried, give me the Holy Ghost, God. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. And I spoke, I spoke with stammering lips for I don't know how long. And I heard the pastor say one night that I believe he's got, I believe he's got the Holy Ghost if he just claims it. <laughs> Amen. You know, he does speak to his people with stammering lips and on tongues. Hey, man, the God, but you know what? I, I, I needed to be fully persuaded in my mind. No matter what anybody else thought I had, I had to know fully. I had to know for sure that I was, hey man, I had what God said I could have. And I wasn't going to stop no matter what anybody said to me. Hey man, so I just kept right on going, kept on praying, he kept on crying, kept on stirring lips. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. And one night I was at home and I just went to bed and it was way before I fell asleep. A boy spoke to me, Brother David. He said, This is the Holy Ghost. I felt the Holy Ghost up around the ceiling. I know it was, I know it was over me. I, I, I know it was up around the ceiling. I, I could feel it. Just like you, when you get close to an old heating stove, you can feel the closer you get, the hotter that heat felt. But I know it was there because I felt it raining. I felt, the, I felt it up that ceiling. And I felt it. And I know right when it started coming down, it started coming down slowly like this right here. From the crown of my head to the soles of my feet, it rested upon my body. And then I felt it begin to raise back up the same high, the ceiling high again. And I felt it lingering there, just lingering there. And then here it comes back down again. The same speed. It rested on my whole entire body again. It went long after that. I found myself sitting there in, in, in my home by myself, sitting there. Everybody was gone. I was sitting there in the amen. And something come to me and said, I believe I can clearly speak in tongues if I just go on her and kneel down and, and, and pray. And I went in there in that bedroom and I got down and I began to pray. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just the sweetness of heaven hovered over me. What was the preacher was the Holy Ghost. And I began to talk in tongues. It wasn't just a stammering lip, but I began to speak with tongues, brother. As the Holy Ghost give me the utterance, let me tell you something there's no put on here, brother. You don't have to put on nothing for nobody. Amen. Don't settle for anything that's fake. Don't settle for any put on anything. Amen. Settle for the real, genuine power of God. Amen. You can have it. Hey, man, it goes, God said you can. It's for you. It's for your children. Amen. 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 Lord, I praise you tonight. Men and brethren, what shall we do? I'm trying to tell you what we should do tonight. 
I'm trying to tell you what the Bible says to do. You got to repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. I just read it to you. This was apostle speaking in the Word of God, Apostle Peter. Repent and be baptized every one of you. There is churches that would just about tire and fetter you for, for stuff like this. They can tire right on, fetter right on, brother. We're going to preach and teach it right on. I was in a Jesus name church up in on Huntington one year, and I and I preached the same scripture that I read to you. Read it, the scripture. Jesus name church now. Pastor come up behind me. And say, a man told the people. He preached against everything that we believe. I was preaching the way I'm preaching to you tonight. Let me tell you something. I couldn't apologize. My Jesus is, is not welcome. I don't want nothing to do with it. That's right. Amen. If the gospel of God is not welcome, I don't want anything to do with it. Amen. You better read your Bibles Amen. and know the word of God from page to page, the cover to cover. Amen. Better know what the Word of God teaches. And you better know it when a man preaches to you out of the Bible, whether he's preaching you the truth or whether he's preaching some false a doctrine to you. You better know it, amen, to God. If he ain't preaching you the Word of God, you run from him like you want a rattlesnake. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. So many standing in the pulpits today and they're telling folks they don't need to talk in tongues no more. And they won't baptize the way Peter told these folks here. No. Repent, be baptized, every one of you. He didn't, he didn't say, now go to the church of your choice like you hear a lot of preachers would say today. And go to a church of your choice. Let me tell you something, brother. Hey, man, you take a little babe, they're not able to make a choice. You hear me? They're, they're not able. They don't know the teachings. And they're not able to make a choice. Somebody needs to steer them. Somebody needs to teach them. Somebody needs to pour them. Hey, man, to Jesus. What the Word of God is all about. Oh, we need the pastors. We need the teachers of God. shall we do let's follow the word of God let's follow the teachings of God's word amen, amen to God and repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost In other words, you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. You definitely will if you do what the Bible tells you to do. If you do it from the heart. If you let the Word get in the heart. If you let the Word prick the heart. Amen. Then let the Word fix your heart. Amen. Because you will. Amen. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 
preacher, what do they call it? The gift of the Holy Ghost. It's God's gift given yeah. to you. Oh, what a gift, Brother Dave. What a gift. You can't, you can't gift wrap this one and put a big old ribbon on it because it's got so much more than that on it. Amen. There's so much more than that comes with it. Yes. You can't find a box big enough, brother. Amen. Because, hey, man, what is the thing that fills the heavens comes with it? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Oh! Praise God, the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise. What is the promise? It's talking about the gift here. Same thing. For the promise, this gift has been promised to you. And God is not slack concerning His promises. Let me tell you something tonight. The only thing that can keep a person from being filled with the Holy Ghost is their life that they live. If you fail to clean yourself up and get that heart fixed up with God, if you fail to get it cleaned up, brother, that will stand in your way from being filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. God is not going to pour the gift of the Holy Ghost down in, inside of a dirty vessel. The Bible tells us that it, he, he gives the Holy Ghost to them that obeys Him. Amen. <laughs> to them that obeys Him. Yeah. Well, how can you obey God before you get the Holy Ghost and read the Word? Come on. Obey the Word. Obey the Word. Right. The Word of God will lead you. It will teach you. Amen. And you know, there's folks that has prayed for a considerable amount of time. I, I don't know how many years they prayed. And never did get filled with the Holy Ghost. It wasn't God's fault. And this one particular person that I'm talking about, I found out later it was his life. He failed to clean it up. But he kept going back and praying. He failed to clean up the his life. That won't stand in anybody's way. When you come with a broken heart to God, come with a broken heart with tears with a sincere heart and spirit before God with everything you mean, mean business with God with all of your heart with everything that you got within you come to God hey man and then when you come to God now I, I, I'm not I'm not saying that you're not going to fail him when you when you when you start out walking for God because everybody has. I remember when I was a teenager, I was 14 years old, when I come and prayed, and I had an ugly talking habit. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't nothing like a lot of folks had, but, but uh, nevertheless, I had a bad talking habit. Amen. There was just days, but, but Jeremy, that's right. No, brother, it hit me like a brick. Something said to me, you ain't supposed to be talking like that anymore. You're a Christian. <laughs> oh, God. I got... Just one little small word. Oh, I felt so bad. Oh, Lord, felt so bad and I was feeling worse all the time it was it, it, it felt like it's getting this old boy down yeah, yeah 
now I'm, I'm a Christian. I'm not supposed to be talking like that no more. And I, I thought, oh Lord. And I just left and just started walking down the road. I felt like I lost my best friend. I stand. I said one little word that I wasn't supposed to say it before I thought. And I was so sad. And I was just about off in that old mountain. It was about a mile down from the top of that mountain where we lived at and down to the foot of that mountain. And I got probably about a, somewhere around a quarter of a mile to, uh, uh, almost off that mountain and something said, won't you climb back on that hillside and find yourself a place and pray? <laughs> there was God talking to me. I know what it was now. But it was just like me doing all the thinking in my mind, you see. I, I was just 14 years old. Didn't know, didn't know that much about God at all. Right. Didn't know how to pray. Just a few words. So I went up that mountain, brother. I just what I'm going to do. I'm going back inside that hill. I'm going to find me a place and I'm going to pray. But oh, mercy. The, the, the spot I picked to go up that hill, brother, if it wasn't one of the awful places. Thick and briars, but everywhere. And I had to just, I had to just push and tug and, and beat myself through that big old thicket. That was all right, brother. I was desperate. I had to get back on the side of that mountainside there, you see. I had to get back in there and pray. Hey, man, I fought myself through there. I got up on the side of that mountain, but I fell in old side. Hole, those little sag hole down inside that mountain. I got right down in that little sag and that little hole there. Amen to God. And I begin to weep before God. I begin to pray. Amen. That same prayer. That same two or three words. Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me, Jesus. Amen. I begin to weep and the tears begin to flow. Hey man, I cried and prayed a while. And brother, when I come down off that mountain, it felt like a mountain was taken off my shoulders. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Hallelujah to God. <laughs> Praise God. I felt like a new boy. Come on. Yeah. All that weight going off my shoulders. Right. Now, the Lord have mercy. I'm going to have to watch myself here now. I'm going to have to watch myself. Don't you think it didn't make this old boy, amen, careful. Amen, be careful. When my mouth opens, to be careful that nothing like that comes out, brother. Amen to God. That's exactly what I did. And you know what? Amen. One thing after another. I just come to God now. I had other problems in my life, but, but I took them on, brother Dave. Amen. Then I, amen, begin to tackle another problem there. And I, I lay down at night and I pray and I talk to God from the depths of my heart and I say God I, I, I failed you today God I failed you and I want you to forgive me hey man but let me live tomorrow I'm going to try again tomorrow <laughs> hallelujah I had it I had it in my heart in my life I'm going to keep on trying it every day until I get those things down under my feet until I get the victory over them I wasn't going to I don't want to give up. I want to be fully persuaded in my mind that I had what God said I could have. Praise God. Oh, but men and brethren, what shall we do? I'll try my best to tell you what we should do. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's a whole kind of folks. There is so many different denominations, so many of them out there. And out of all those different denominations, they're going to tell you different things. But what I'm preaching to you tonight, this don't come from a denomination. <laughs> And this don't come to a, to a ism and a schism. This don't come through just a whole lot of thinking. This comes from the scriptures. This comes from the word of God. This comes from the Holy Ghost. Amen. This comes how the Bible pages. Amen to God. 
the hallelujah to the Lamb. What shall we do? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Well, we can see there the same the same apostles that he's talking to in Matthew 28. They were obeying him over here in, in Acts the second chapter. <laughs> They did exactly what Jesus told them to do. You think they'd have been his disciples if it, if they didn't obey him and do what he said to do? No, he wouldn't have had them. If they wouldn't follow and if they wouldn't be obedient to him, they would not have been his apostles. They wouldn't have to agree to baptize folks. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Brother, they better go ahead and use your name if they go that far. If they say I do it, brother, they better do it. If Jesus, amen, if they don't bring his name in there, I'm afraid they, I'm folks will be in trouble. Because they ain't really baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. If they have to use Jesus' name. Amen. Well, can somebody say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. People has done this to the, to the system today, the, the world system. Catholic has been the denomination where the first amen to, to take uh, and baptizing people in the name of the titles instead of Jesus' name, Catholic folks. Yep. It's it's downtown in the, in the dictionary. It's the year, the year that they started doing this. It's recorded, and they're proud of it. Now you know what they're telling folks. A man that just baptized in, in, in titles now. You know what the, you know what the Catholic uh, has told them. They might as well come on in here with us now. They already got our doctrine. Catholic telling the world this. They might as well come on in with us. They already got our doctrine. It's recorded in our dictionaries. Amen. And let me tell you something, brother. We can see how the power of God moved in these men's lives. We can see how the Holy Ghost. We can see how the miracles and the signs that has followed their teachings and the, and the Word of God that they preached. We, we can see God Himself, hey man, uh, uh, God Himself working these miracles as they taught and preached the Word of God. Now God would not have done these things if they hadn't have been preaching and teaching the truth, the Word of God. Hey man, uh, God was confirming His Word with miracles and signs following. They were. The apostles done the preaching, the teaching, the baptism, and all this kind of stuff. But it was God Himself that did the confirming. Amen. Confirming His Word Amen. with miracles and signs and wonders that Confirmed. God confirmed His Word. God confirmed that these men, they are preaching my Word. These men are preaching, they are teaching my Word. Amen. God was confirming the is the very truth. He confirmed it with power. He confirmed it with miracles and signs following the Word. God confirmed it. Not some man... Brother, this is this this didn't come just from some man. This this come from the gospel of God. Amen. 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 Let me tell you something, folks. Get established strong. Get rooted and grounded strong. In the gospel, in the word of God. Don't let anything don't let anything move you. 
Don't let anything pull you aside. Don't let anything, hey man, cause you to, to go any other way. Hey man, but this right here. Hey man, come on. This right here. Praise God. Oh, let the singers come. For the promises unto you and to your children. You don't get too old, you don't get too young. No, you don't. I've seen little small children filled with the Holy Ghost. I know they was filled with you, 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 you know when the Spirit of God is moving in the person's life. You can feel it, it'll witness to you. Seen little small children glowing in the in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You and your children. Amen. And to all. Amen. And to all that are far off. That brought up into our day now. And beyond our day. And to all far off. To all that are far off, even as many, everyone, as many as the Lord our God shall call, everyone that God called, it is for. It is for you. No matter what some man says, it's for you. It's for you. Glory to God. Get filled up. Oh, get overrunning. Get to overrunning. Hey, man, to God. When I was just a teenager, brother, I got back in my bedroom and, hey, man, I prayed and cried. I put me, they, we used to have record players back then with big, big, large albums. I put a stack of them albums on that record player and one drop right after another. I was still praying and, and crying. And, hey, man, and, and the power of God got a hold of this old boy in such a way. Hey, man, it moved. I, I felt the power of God get in my body so strong it felt like my face was swollen so help me it did it felt like my eyes were swollen about my lips felt like it was swollen hey man be God and I come out of that bedroom brother let me tell you something to get a walk down that, that hallway hey man be God with the Holy Ghost of God burning up the inside of me hey man be God hey Come out of that bedroom. Hey, man, I was, I was speaking over and over. Go and so. Go. Go and so. Hey, man, why was it, preacher? God was called me to preach that day. Oh, he said, go. Go and so. Go and go. And so, I was 15 years old. Hey, man, no, I'm sorry. I was 17 years old when God called me to preach His Word. Hey, man, the God is coming down the hallway. Go! And so, I didn't know God was speaking to me. I didn't know. Hey, man, I thought, well, this must be for my sister. She was going to church a lot longer than I was. And so I walked up to my sister. I laid my hands on her weak and he cried. Oh, I said, go. He go. And so, he go. And so, and she looked at me and she said, Damon, this, that's not for me. That's not for me. God's calling you the preach. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah! Oh, praise God! Hey. And let me tell you something. I've been going and sowing ever since. tell you something tonight this thing it will change your whole entire life if you if you really sincerely with all of your heart give it a chance don't let anything stand in your way 
You go at this thing with everything you got. You give it all, give your all to it. Give it your best shot. See what God will do for you. See what kind of experience with God is there. See what God has got waiting for you. There's eternal life waiting for you. The Holy Ghost is waiting for you. The gospel of God. All these good things of God. So many good things hidden within these Bible pages is all waiting for you. Come and get it. Get a hold of it. waiting for you like you never thought was possible get a hold of it with your heart with your soul with your spirit I had it fixed in my mind in my heart God I was going to I was going to get it the way you wanted it I'm going to get these things out of my way, Lord. I'm going to get, I'm going to get all these problems out of my way. I'm going to die trying. Every day, every day when I feel like I fell under that bed, I repented. I said, God, if I live tomorrow, I'm going to try again. I failed you. I failed you, God. I failed you today, but I, I, I'm going to try again tomorrow, God. When I come out of that bed next day, that was on my mind, one of the first things coming out of that bed. Amen. To live. And to live good for God. I mean live good for Him. Live clean for Him. That's towards that church. you got to live good for Jesus. You hear me? Amen. If you live good and you live clean before God, I can guarantee you this and that. Oh, you're, you're going to feel good. Oh, yeah, you will. You'll feel the Holy Ghost like fire in you. You live good and clean before God. He just ain't no telling what God do for you. Well, He just do so much for you. As they sing a song. I don't know if we got anyone here tonight that's lost or not, but if there is... But I'll give you an opportunity to come and pray. This altar is open. This altar is open. I believe there's some nail scarf hands are stretching out tonight. Stretching out to you. Stretching out to you for new life. A new life. Any that needs the Holy Ghost, the altar is open. Oh, you should pray for it every night if you don't have the Holy Ghost. You should. You, you, you should. Be hard awake to get to the house of God and seek Him and pray. And, and stay that way until you're filled full to overrun Him with the Holy Ghost power of God. So come on right now in Jesus' name. What are they saying? You need, you need the Holy Ghost. And it, it, it's open. It's time. It's time to pray. Oh, it's time to get a hold of Jesus. It's time to get a hold of this God tonight. It's time. It's time to reach out in prayer. It's time to pray. Oh, it's time. <laughs> it's time to reach out with your heart tonight. Oh, it's time to reach out with your soul. It's time to reach out with everything you got.
Him who helped us, God, the Holy Ghost upon the night. Hey.